and welcome to day 75 of the Atlantic Hurricane season. It's day 93 in the Eastern Pacific and that's where we have two invests at the moment. We actually have two invests in both the Eastern Pacific and in the Atlantic now. We currently have 90C uh, towards the Central Pacific, 92E still going in the Eastern Pacific, 92L in the Caribbean and 93L which has just moved off the African coastline over the past uh, day or so. We also have 90S still going in the South Indian Ocean which isn't likely to develop and of course Utor which is what we're really tracking at this, uh, this moment in time uh, a category 2 typhoon a high-end cat 2 typhoon about to make landfall in china in the next few hours but this is the current situation you can see the pacific ocean the satellite imagery here showing uh, all three systems 92e is down to 20 percent chance of development um, and it, it seems to be a, a less likely scenario that it will develop at this point. Uh, 92L in, in the Atlantic is one we're watching as well, which could develop into a tropical storm, as could 93L as it moves out towards the central Atlantic. Um, a few of the models are developing both of these systems. And in the Indian Ocean we have 90S, which is currently located towards the uh, southern Indian Ocean. It started near the equator um, and is now uh, moving south beyond 15 degrees south and is beginning to... Um, by the looks of things turn pale tropical um, and will probably not be a, th a threat to uh, anywhere. Looking at the sea surface temperatures then you can see the eastern Pacific first of all still very warm waters in this area especially around Mexico uh, 28 to 30 degrees generally but and even out to sea um, warm waters remaining here. Where 92E is at the moment waters are a little bit cooler but still warm enough for tropical development. Um, and in the western Pacific here where Utor is right now, it's around 28 degrees I believe, uh, or maybe a little bit less where the storm is currently situated, but still, that's not really a concern for the storm's development. Um, land interaction will probably be the uh, biggest thing which will inhibit the storm now. And here it is, Typhoon Utor. The Philippine name was Labugo. The current wind speed is at 110 miles per hour. Pressure is 952 millibars and position currently uh, right now is 19.8 degrees north, 112.9 degrees east and is expected to move towards the northwest, making landfall in China in the next few hours and then uh, gradually weakening it into a tropical depression eventually and then dissipating ultimately. Uh, but there it is at the moment, just uh, northeast, or, um, yeah, northeast of Hainan Island and towards the southeast of, uh, of uh, China, the Chinese mainland, to the southwest of Hong Kong and Macau as well. A red typhoon warning is currently in effect for Guangdong, Hainan and Guangxi provinces. Uh, that's the highest level uh, in terms of typhoon warnings in China. That's the most severe of the four categories. So um, obviously expecting a severe storm to make landfall though. And it is indeed 110 miles per hour and is likely to remain a category 2 storm up until landfall. And then it will begin to weaken. Signal 8 warnings also in effect. For Hong Kong and Macau, we could see some uh, gusty winds here, um, gusting towards typhoon strength as well over the next few hours in particular when it makes its closest approach to those areas. Um, but it will make landfall in China, obviously delivering uh, it winds in excess 100 miles per hour sustained, very likely uh, in, in the uh, immediate landfall area. Looking at the wind shear map, then you can see the wind shear has cleared off to the northeast. There is a bit more building over the Hainan region and the Gulf of Tonkin, but as the storm moves in, it will be a fairly moderate shear. Probably won't be affecting the storm too much. As I say, it will be land interaction that will be the main effect for storm weakening over the next few days, unless that shear continues to increase. Uh, and this is the current moisture as well, you can see the uh, water vapour imagery, a lot of uh, moist atmosphere around the storm Utor at the moment, and you could see from there the uh, spiral bands extending all the way north, halfway through China as a matter of fact, um, in, those last, uh, in these last few frames as well, you can see it there as the centre of the storm moves ever closer towards the Chinese coast. Um, you can certainly see an eye as well, which is still going as it moves towards the west northwest. A little bit of a gap in the coverage there, but you can still see it fairly clearly. Um, and a few um, areas of interest as well, off to the off to the east as well, out in the open Pacific, which could develop into our next storm perhaps um, as time goes by. This is the floater imagery. You can see the storm uh, somewhat disorganised in terms of its in terms of its eye and its eye wall, especially towards the northern side. Uh, but it is moving towards the, the chaos stand will indeed cause some um, disruption over there and hazardous conditions, absolutely. Uh, and this is Invest 92E currently in the, in the eastern Pacific. You can see how it's uh, fizzling out a little bit. Uh, the chances of development have gone down considerably. It was 70% at one point, but it is now down to 20% as it moves towards the west. Dry air yeah, perhaps intruding as well, um, but it is moving there towards the west, generally due, due west over the next few days. Uh, we'll look at a mo in a moment to see whether the models still develop that storm, any of them. 
and this is 90S as well in the South Indian Ocean you can see that one uh, coming to a close as well a bit of a demise going on here um, as the storm moves generally towards the south at this point um, not too much more to say about that one it's an early season um, feature for that region it's still off season pretty much and it livens up a little bit in September and October and really kicks in in November time the CMC model then first of all uh, takes 92E off to the west and forms the two systems in the Atlantic. First of all, 92L, which forms in the Gulf of Mexico, makes landfall in Florida, possibly as a hurricane. And then 93L, which moves out into the open Atlantic and becomes a rather broad system as well. Um, probably a hurricane, but stays out to sea. The ECMWF model takes 93L out to sea, out to the Atlantic, um, and possibly makes it a tropical storm, but moves it towards the west-northwest. And a hurricane forming in the eastern Pacific as well. It's been fairly consistent with that. So I think we may see one in, in a few days' time. The GFS model takes 93L out to the Central Atlantic, possibly making it a tropical storm. Not really much in terms of 92L out in the Gulf of Mexico. It does go through to make landfall in Florida eventually, but it is a weak system throughout. Uh, the NAVGEM model forms another system in the Eastern Pacific, as it does in the Atlantic as well. The Central Atlantic a system forming there as well. That is 93L uh, moving through the uh, Cape Verde Islands and then moving west-northwest out to sea. Uh, the GFDR model, this is for 90C I believe, uh, moving it out to sea towards the west and doesn't develop either of them, 90, 90C or 92E, you can see them both there, especially at the start and then they both uh, eventually weaken and dissipate. The HWRF model I believe is fairly similar, um, perhaps a little bit more generous but not much, not developing either of them into tropical storms at this point, moving south of Hawaii both systems. Um, and this is the current intensity comparisons, this is Invest 92. Um, you can see not much intensification is expected, most of the models keep it well below tropical storm strength um, and then eventually weaken it completely, apart from the GFDL which seems to strengthen it towards that very end of that one there. Uh, this is the track forecast, this looks fairly old as a matter of fact, moving it out to sea uh, pretty much due west, moving it past Hawaii, far to the south not to cause any difficult conditions over there. And this is the uh, shear comparisons as well over the next few days. Uh, shear is at a low at the moment according to most models and is expected to rise very soon, quite a steep rise as well according to HWRF in particular um, and will certainly make it unfavourable for any further development. And the sea surface temperatures as well will remain above 26 degrees which is generally the threshold for cyclone development. Um, so that's certainly not an issue but the other factors are working a little bit out of its favour. Uh, this is the humidity as well, staying around 60% generally, uh, which is marginally favourable um, for development over the next few days. Uh, so let's take a look at the Western Pacific models then. The CMC takes uh, Utor into China and then moves it out to sea just a little bit um, around Hainan. Uh, and forms that second storm as well in the western Pacific, forming near the Japanese islands and then keeping it offshore and then developing into a rather intense typhoon moving through Okinawa and then towards China. The GFS model is fairly similar with Utor, moving it into China and then over northern Vietnam by the looks of things and forms that second system as well um, into uh, just southeast of Taiwan and then moves it through the Japanese islands once more and then eventually into China, not too far from Shanghai. This is the overall predicted season scores then for August the 14th. Uh, this is our current competition. MH Raphael remains in first place with 61 points. William in second also with 61. And BFDIA submission 2 is in third place with 57 points at this time. You can submit your own um, predicted season totals at the website force13.com forward slash interactive. Just click the 2013 predict a season button and um, submit your totals what, whatever you think may occur this season uh, but don't do hurry up with it because uh, time is running out and uh, the accuracy does fall as time goes on and indeed that um, affects your total points that you may receive so what happened on this day then on august the 14th in 1969 a little known storm called camille formed in the caribbean also debbie formed in the central atlantic on this day in 1975, tropical storm Georgette dissipated in the eastern Pacific. In 1976, Hurricane Hyacinth dissipated in the eastern Pacific as well. And in 1980, tropical storm Bonnie formed in the central Atlantic um, and moved northwards. In 1983, Hurricane Ismail dissipated in the eastern Pacific but still caused damages of $19 million in Mexico and the United States. In 1989, tr another tropical storm Ismail formed in the eastern Pacific. In 1990, tropical storm Fran made landfall in Trinidad and Tobago, that one's pictured as well. And in 1991, tropical storm Hilda dissipated in the eastern Pacific on this day. 
1993, tropical storm Cindy formed near Barbados and made landfall in Martinique, resulting in two fatalities and $2.7 million of damages. In 1994, tropical storm Bell formed in the Gulf of Mexico. In 1996, Kirk made landfall in Japan as a Category 2 storm, resulting in two fatalities. There it is a peak intensity centered right over uh, Okinawa. In 1996, also tropical storm Marty made landfall in Vietnam. And in 2004, Charlie made landfall in South Carolina. Um, resulting, I believe, in $47 million of damages, if I read that right. Um, and don't forget, you can track the storm, any storm that forms, at the website, force13.com forward slash storm tracking. There may be some new ones on the way, and indeed, we're currently tracking uh, Utor as it makes its final landfall in China as a Category 2 typhoon. That's what it looks like at the moment, but we'll have updates on that one on the website in between these videos, uh, force13.com forward slash storm tracking. That's the main page where you can see the overview map where all the storms are located, and at the top and bottom tables which show their intent intensities and um, any warnings that are currently in effect as well. Obviously we do have some uh, serious warnings currently in effect in China, the Red Typhoon warning and Signal 8 warnings currently in effect in Hong Kong and in Macau at this time. And don't forget you can visit the uh, social pages, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 is on all three of those mediums, so please do check them out if you wish and um, do show your support by doing the usual means of engagement by liking, subscribing, commenting, following, favouriting or indeed anything else that you may wish to do. Um, just send in a comment if you have anything to say about this video, or indeed me, if you wish. Um, just below this video, or indeed as a private message if you so wish. Um, and uh, any comments are very much appreciated, as is uh, any other positive means of engagement, or indeed negative ones, I suppose, uh, if, they're, if they're called for. 103 days until Hurricane Week as well, um, that's coming up at the end of November. If you want to see more about that, you can visit the website, force13.com forward slash HW2013. That outlines what's going on this year. It's uh, certainly an exciting project. It's the biggest one, the biggest undertaking so far. Um, and we'd like you to get involved as well, so if you feel you can contribute, please do so. Please uh, send me a message. And uh, the next bulletin will be coming up at around midnight UTC. That's on the morning of the 15th of August. That's Thursday morning, uh, around 24 hours from now. Uh, but for now, that's all.